Hi, my name's James O'Keefe. I'm captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party. No video for me today. Unfortunately, uh, I, I fixed my focusing issue, but sadly, it's really slow. So while we figure out uh, how to get better video on this, it'll just be four little boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'm joined today um, by Eli, Joe, and Steve. How are the three of you? I am fantastic, Echo. Yeah, doing all right. Doing good. Wonderful. So uh, before we get to the main topic, quick thing that you'll see in the uh, description below. Uh, we are planning to attend the Worcester Pride uh, Festival and have a table there if you'd like to uh, join us and, and help us at that. Um, we have at least two people so far. Uh, please, you know, go down to the description below and fill in the form. And uh, we'd love pirates uh, and supporters of pirates to come in and join us talk about the pirate party. Uh, so with that, uh, we have three topics today. Steve, can you tell us about the outage that affected uh, micro some percentage of Microsoft users? Oh, yeah. So this is, um, you know, it, it's it's funny. It, people talk about, you know, you know, this career is bad. This These people are crooked. I don't like the people who do this kind of work. I'm a software developer. We mess things up at scale. <laughs> and I mean scale. <laughs> so th this was a so this was an issue where uh you know a bunch of PC, Windows PCs all around the world in various industries, uh you know, airlines, government agencies, state agencies, some local governments, hospitals, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, took a software update machine went to reboot and it did not it well basically it fell down it uh, could, did not get up the blue the infamous windows blue screen of death so this was not actually a problem with windows so there is a piece of uh security software by a vendor named crowdstrike and i think the the specific software is called the falcon suite but anyway there was um you know this software runs on different operating systems, you know, in addition to Mac, you also have variants for Windows and Linux. Didn't affect, uh, in addition to, yeah, Windows, it runs on Mac and Linux. It didn't affect Mac and Linux, but it affected Windows rather badly. So the, you know, the, the symptom was, you know, you start the machine and it just basically get crashes in the, the blue screen, screen of death. Fortunately, this was, you know, sort of fixable in the field. Um, perhaps in a labor in an, in an, an annoying and labor intensive way. Uh, you basically had to take take an affected PC, boot it into safe mode, so it didn't load any extra drivers or stuff like that. Then you had to get into a you know basically a little uh, DOS prompt and go to a certain directory and delete a couple of files. Um, and you know from there things would things would work again. Um, this is much preferable than to say, you know, having the entire machine bricked, uh, which certain kind of updates can do. But, you know, fortunately, that's not what happened here. Some, you know, I having I, I could imagine that there are some people, uh, you know, IT technicians and stuff who had a very fun Friday <laughs> dealing with this stuff. But, you know, the the fallout is, you know, you had you know, the real world consequences of when computer systems go wrong or stop working suddenly. Um, you know, you have airplanes not flying, you have, you know, medical record systems that don't work and so on and so on. But, you know, it looks like it's, you know, it is a fixable thing and it's just a matter of, you know, people cleaning up the mess. Joe, what do you, what do you think? So, I mean, it wasn't, uh, hacker it wasn't any type of cyber attack it was just a technical glitch that was overcome it was fixable essentially yeah, it was a bug <laughs> i mean i saw that they were talking about how this was like worldwide affecting everywhere but fundamentally it was the reason why they ground all those flights was for safety correct mm -hmm. 
that I do not know that for sure, but apparent I would assume that if you have computer systems that are, you know, used in the functioning of an airport, part of that, you know, involves the man management of planes. And if you no longer have the tools to do that, well, things would kind of stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if you can't if you can't determine who's supposed to go on the plane, <laughs> then you can't exactly uh, you know. It's it's a little harder. I mean, I some people have you know will have paper, but not everyone. Sometimes there'll be QR codes or whatever, and those those aren't exactly human readable. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. And if you can't print out tickets for people, then yeah, yeah. I mean, the one piece about this um, that I have not seen, and because you know, and it's only been a few days, but. Uh, just sort of like a root cause analysis there one of the which by root cause analysis I mean how did this um, bug that I mean it was a pretty apparently obvious kind of thing uh, get shipped and you know one of the things that we've seen in recent years is the prevalence of what are called supply chain attacks where you take a a, a software company that does met network management software or security software or something along those lines and you embed something bad in their stuff so that you know basically they have users all over the world and you know if you can compromise the code that they release and ship well then you can you can you can as as i think this is a legal term but fuck shit up <laughs> so um yeah, the root cause analysis will be will be interesting to to read when um, you know if it is you know dis disclosed at some point in the future. I don't know. The one thing I heard was someone pushed a file that was empty. That that's one of the probably rumors that that went around. Which I feel like if the file is empty, then the software should be able to like recover. <laughs> And be like, oh, something went wrong with the file. Okay, like, don't shut, don't like blue screen of death, but just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. deal with it and use the defaults or something like that. But, you know, I mean, the problem is the software, oh, you put that in and then over time things evaluate. And, oh, we, we, oh, we're 100% reliable. We never have a problem putting this. This is not a, a valid test case anymore. Let's get rid of it. And then it's like, yep. <laughs> and then, well, it makes me. This makes me feel a little bit better about AI taking over the world. Just like. there is a there is was a better bricking story, um, you know, because what what's another thing that has computers all over the place and is sort of ubiquitous in day to day life? Automobiles, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I could, you know, so something that bricks a whole bunch of cars. Yeah, that that's potentially a possibility. There was a man, an auto manufacturer, and I'm blanking on the name of it, but uh, they had a bug in sort of their file management system um, that it was it, it was tied to sort of like the the in-car entertainment system. So radio station plays a song, you know, they can you know, sort of side channel some information about who the artist is and maybe a, like an album cover or a picture or something like that. So the, you know, pictures usually have file extensions that indicate that they're images like .png, .jpg, et cetera. Well, there is this one radio station that uh, sent, you know, you know, had one of these, you know, it sent down one of these images and um, didn't have a file extension. And the, apparently the, um, the automobile tried to when you start it up and it tried to um, treat it as a firmware update. <laughs> so, you know, there are there are lots of mistakes to be made. I mean, that sounds like inadequate firewalling somehow. It does, it does, but you know, um... <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're we're planning to talk about it. I, I know there's, I don't know, wasn't there some attack that has taken out like a lot of car dealerships, and they're not really able to. I that mean, I have not heard of. Maybe I'll cover it next time. We'll, we'll look at it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the second topic that we wanted to discuss um, is the recent announcement 
uh, well, just all the stuff that's happening in the political presidential election space. But now that Biden has officially decided that he's going to uh, just be president through the end of this term and not run again, um, the election got a lot more interesting. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Game on, man. <laughs> I mean, didn't he officially nominate somebody? I mean, he endorsed uh, Harris, vice president. Oh, endorsed. Yeah. Yeah, Sadly, he did, he did not uh, endorse Vermin Supreme, who is the U.S. Pirate Party's uh, endorsed candidate for president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my understanding is that the act, you know, the Democratic Party has a convention sometime in August. I forget the dates, but it's sometime in August. And that is where, you know, I guess delegates will cast their votes. And, you know, now that you know, President Biden's delegates are not are no longer, you know, tied up to Biden, will will um presumably that well, they're gonna choose a process that they're gonna choose. <laughs> so this is really just sort of a party thing at this point. But uh, we'll find out in a month. Well, I'm sorry. Well, oh, go ahead, Joe. No, no, go, go. Uh, I was kind of wondering who is going to be vice, but um, you know, just you know, the other the other half of the ticket. But again, patience, 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 my boy. I mean, I I I, I have heard that certain swing states, and and it's just it's just a. It's just an indication of how messed up our election process is that we even have the concept of swing states because literally no other country has this issue. And, and that is um, certain states where the GOP holds the legislature and there are swing states and they're like, well, I don't know. Maybe we won't actually place the Democrat on the ballot because it wasn't the one in the primary, which is just I wouldn't put it past some people. I am sure there will be litigation over this. So, but ultimately that's, you know, the, the, a party choice for candidate is, you know, the party, right? Am I right? Yeah. It's, there, there's nothing in the constitution or laws about that. It's, it's the party internal procedure determines who their nominee is going to be. And it should just be a rubber stamp. Just go and put this person on the ballot. Yeah, and, shenanigans to that. yeah, and I, you know, I have at least a vague impression that, you know, primaries as we currently have them are, you know, a relatively new thing. And, you know, at, for example, 100 years ago, you, the party just chose their candidates however they chose them. And, you know, you didn't have uh, voters weighing in on primaries. Yeah, I, I think it, I mean, I thought it was a hundred years. I thought it was about a hundred years ago that the primaries went. The progressives, I think, pushed it. And it was one of those, you know, they're deciding these things in backroom deals. We should, you know, boss whatever would go and have his people vote for whomever he wanted them to vote for. And they would be decided in backroom deals as opposed to, well, the people should decide and the rich people will choose the candidates who we could get to select. <laughs> and then we get to, you know, vote for who those candidates, which candidate we act, which of the rich candidates uh, we, we will support. Um, yeah. As someone famous once said, I don't care who does a vote and, but I want, I do care who does the nominate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Stalin quote about vote about counting, I think, in there too. But, anyways, uh, other thoughts on this? Well, you know, with him having as many issues as he has, um, I'm kind of glad that he's stepping down because that way we can have somebody who will actually beat Trump. Um, but uh, uh, the other aspect, or the other side of the coin, is that this man has served this country in senior leadership positions. He's, he's done so much work overseas that no matter what he decides is best for him, 
Uh, I'm truly grateful for all he's done for this country. You know, and I might not agree with everything that he's done or all the stances that he's taken, but he is definitely somebody who is who has done more than his fair share for this country. And, you know, I just want to say that I really appreciate Joe Biden and everything that he's done. So I hope he gets to spend more time with his family. And um, and I really am grateful that we've had him as our president. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, you know, it's it's not a, you know, stepping down isn't a fault. It's, you know, eventually people get old and, you know, there comes a day when it's time to re- time to you know set a date for retirement. I hope more people in politics follow his example. Oh, that would be so lovely. <laughs> it's a lot of really old people in government who need to move on. <laughs> One and the other party tickets <laughs> advice. But, you know. Yo, man, why is your candidate so old? <laughs> <laughs> but his age, his age, her emails, his age. Uh, so um, thank you for that. So our last story is comes from Methuen. Uh, Joe, do you want to? Yay, more uh, surveillance in in a state that doesn't or a town that really sure they have some crime but they're like suburbia Uh, so why why do you need more cameras what what's going on that's so bad in methuen so methuen is between lawrence and uh is basically right on the border of lawrence and haverhill and salem new hampshire so it's like right there right neck it's like the town to hop skip and jump right up off of uh 28 and there's just a ton of you go right up into salem new hampshire there's tons of malls and there's just all sorts of attractions and fun things to do right but methuen is just like i don't get why they need all these cameras um so essentially what's going on is they're adding a ton more cameras they're cracking down and and this is historically a town that's really not that bad. So I, I unfortunately I didn't get to fully understand or digest the article that you linked over, but um, just knowing Methuen, it does, I, I don't get this play. Yeah. I mean, they're doubling the number of surveillance cameras they have. Um, <clears throat> and it, it'll still be like one tenth what Lawrence has. Lawrence has 500. Um, but yeah, it's just, do you need that many surveillance cameras? Like literally, I, I, I don't even think Somerville has 50 surveillance cameras. Well, here's or the thing. Lawrence city surveillance cameras, I should say. Lawrence makes sense. How else are you going to suppress the poor? Um, but uh, in all seriousness, Lawrence does have problems. You know, a lot of it's stemming from economic instability and so um lawrence has historically had a lot of issues uh back in its heyday it was one of the mill cities uh lowell lawrence and lynn all known for uh always being a rougher city and so with lawrence it's always kind of been hard knocks you know, a lot of great tradesmen come out of Lawrence and Methuen and Lowell and a lot of a lot of hardworking people come out of those towns. Now, it being a hub for crime, I, I don't I don't get to see Methuen getting more cameras being anything but just a tool of oppression. So like when do we go camera mapping, guys? Yeah, that's, that's a good call. <laughs> we should plan for September. Well, let me know what date to mark my calendar. <laughs> uh, actually, or August. August is probably the better one. Um, well, we'll work on that and get back to you guys later. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, certainly, if that's something that folks want to do on their own, we have instructions at cctv.masspirates.org. 
and we'll put links in the description below. Um, so with that, uh, thank the three of you for joining me uh, in discussing the latest news of interest to pirates. Uh, thanks, folks, for watching this. We hope you found it informative. If there's if you're interested in helping us with it, by all means, contact us at info at masspirates.org. Um, you know the drill, drill, like, share, subscribe, all that other stuff. Uh, hope you have a wonderful time and stay cool. And uh, yeah, hopefully things will get a little less insane. But we'll see. Probably not, sadly. And if not, we have robust health services for mental health now. So... There's always that. If you need to talk to somebody. Take care, folks. Bye.